Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Her final hot topic it says Finidi Judge quits Nigeria's 2026 World Cup in jeopardy. Now, Nigeria's 2026 World Cup qualification is in jeopardy after poor results in recent matches. Finidi Judge tenure has head coach started with this disappointing results. Due to these failures, the Nigerian Football Federation, NFF, is considering hiring a foreign coach to replace Finidi. This action led to Finidi's reported resignation, frustrated with being blamed for the team's failure. Now joining us is a sports analyst, George Ameli. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. A very good morning to you. All right. So we're talking about, um, you know, the sports, um, you know, um, industry right now, if I can say that, or the sports sector. And we're talking about Finidi Judge quitting, you know, being head coach of Nigeria's team. Please, can you bring us up to speed with all that's happening right now? Well, all the future of the matter is that Finidi believe he has taken the position based on too much pressure, especially negative pressure for that matter. At some point, in one of his press conferences, he deliberately said that this is no time for Nigerians to give up. Meaning he believes that with the remaining six matches, he is capable, with the remaining six matches and almost a year to go before those matches will start, he would have been able to gather his techniques and all whatever challenges he was able to overcome them within that time frame. But when it didn't seem as if the country was going alongside his line of thinking, he now decided that the best way to go about this business is to leave it and keep his name intact if for some people there is still a name. Yeah, because I was about to ask that. Is there still a name? Because um, I know that in the news there's been an issue with Victor Simon, who's the um, African player of the year. And, you know, he was coming at Finidi saying Finidi disrespected him, um, saying how much he did not want to be part of the team. Meanwhile, he had some injuries. So do you think there's still a name? And maybe Finidi wasn't just doing the right thing, um, having to galvanize the teammates together. Well, I think what's funny, there normally is a channel of communication between a club site and the Nigerian Football Federation, as well. When the player is in the truth of the matter is that it is not even the cement's place to tell the coach or the authorities that he is injured. Immediately, players are nominated for games. If you are injured, your medical department will immediately inform the Federation that, look, this guy cannot meet up these things. But all of a sudden, it became a personal issue. That was why it got down to that level. The channel of communication was extremely wrong. The seaman had no business telling the coach or the NFL president or anybody for that matter that he was injured. Mm. It was, she was being the doctors of Napoli saying, a man got injured at XYZ time and will need such and such amount of time frame to recover. So when that, that exchange for me was what even got to the level that miscommunication started informing the decisions, the wrong decisions of some people. For instance, like you will see, there is no place in it will you will be quoted as having said, Osimen is my problem. Mm. But because of assumptions, Osimen was informed that this was what we could say without verification. He went on that um, diatribe. For me, it was most unfortunate. As a person, as an ambassador, as a brand, I didn't think Osime should have gone to that level. Having said that, he really felt that this has come too bad for me, to the level that even players, I know at least I watched the interview where he said that players are in discipline. That didn't mean the cement was or is in this evening. So he should, for me, he shouldn't have taken it personally. The fact that it was taken personally, that's the issue. Hmm. But one thing that Osime said was um, the fact that he had even told Finidi, okay, you know what, I want to come and camp with my teammates. But Finidi had said, do not bother. Um, and then he goes on to say that I'm not going to beg, you know, players to come or players to play for Nigeria. I'm here doing my best. 
But do you think that players are really indisciplined and maybe he just doesn't have the, um, the leadership to be able to put them together? That's the point exactly. I believe he believes that he has the leadership to do so, that he met a situation on ground where indiscipline was the order of the day. And he made um, a general statement, so to speak. And probably he believes that given the time frame between now and March 2025, he will be able to overcome that extent of indiscipline. Don't forget, he was a player himself, so he understands what happens in camps, how a discipline is curtailed, and all of that, and all of that. Probably he believed that he had time on his hands, but Nigerians were just too impatient with him. But of course, it's extremely, it's extremely very possible to understand the impatience of Nigeria. Four points, no wins, uh, it was stretching the, the patience of Nigerians. But we could have waited. Mm. Okay, so what did Fini did not do well? I mean, we saw the um, Super Eagles go to the AFCON and win silver. In fact, they almost won the gold. So what is what did Fini did not do right that the other coach did, and you know that has resulted to this as well. <laughs> Well, for me, I would not say particularly that this was what the uh, Finidi didn't do well, except for um, practically using that same team. Because if he was in that team, he would do well to remember that he was in that team. Yeah. He should have been able to know that XYZ are in the same plane players, and I am not going to start my regime with them. That declaration of intent would have told some that made the team that indiscipline is not tolerable here. So for me, he, he said something, he didn't act on it. He could have, for the first time, even from his first game against South Africa, endeavor to play, invite, not even play, invite players whom he believes were are in, not indisciplined, and that those that were uh, obviously indisciplined, in the course of the Afghan in Cote d'Ivoire, dropped them. That would have been a statement. For me, that was his, if not his only mistake. Mm. And now he's being blamed with the team's failure because obviously there was a loss and a draw. And of course, this same team that almost won silver or this same team that won silver, almost won gold, are not doing as well. And they're having losses, they're having draws. So do you think that we can blame Finidi or his right to resign um, being frustrated for the team's failure? Do you think that is a right reason for him to resign? The truth of, like I told you, the negative pressure was just so much. But Finidi was, should have been in a position to understand that um, the boss stops at my desk. Because if he had won those two games, all of their uh, improvements would have gone to him, not even the players. So that is what he should have accommodated. Probably he did not have the elasticity to do that. And like going forward, you should be able to know that the ball stops at his desk. He is the man in charge. He is the man that will receive the blame. As well as, of course, the praise, if that had been the issue. Yes, of course, if there were praises, I'm sure if... Um, Nigeria had won those games, um, all of the success, all of the praises would have come to him. The applause would have been for him. And now, you know, having to fail as a team, he's just been frustrated and has decided to resign. But what's the way forward for the um, Super Eagles and NFF? What's the way forward? If we're looking for a new coach, coach, I know they've said they're looking for a foreign coach who's going to come as, you know, a technical advisor or something. But if they're looking for someone as that, what are some things or um, the criteria to look for a person that can come and, you know, put the team together, whip them up, and ensure that they succeed in their next games? In their next games, like we said, we have so much time on our hands in terms of the qualifiers, but for the intermittent games that will take place for the Af AFCON qualifiers, who, uh, for me, whomever is contracted going forward should be given time. We should not be rushing coaches on game to game basis. Look at the time frame. The most successful coach so far has been Glenn's best and we can all say 
This is the reason why he was that much successful with the Nigerian national team. Five solid years, do well. He did do well to remember that he, Clemens Bessau himself, didn't win his first game in charge. And that is, I, I can remember when he came in 1989. This pressure was not there. The pressure for me against that we didn't give him the judge benefit of doubt. We didn't give him time. We didn't give him the convenience of the environment that the office comes with. So, whomever is coming, what has happened has happened. Unfortunately, he has resigned. He is gone. Whomever they choose, they did fit to run this team. They should endeavor to give the fellow time. Like I said, I was of the opinion that Nigeria, with finity or no finity, will get into the World Cup, Canada, Mexico, USA, in 2026, giving six matches to many. But crying out loud, loud, Lesotho, Zimbabwe, Rwanda, South Africa, the Republic, uh, no, there is no way Nigeria will not come out of that, group, mm -hmm. my opinion. Well, hopefully we get to come out from what you've said and calling all these other countries. Of course, Nigeria's team should be formidable. But you are saying that we need to give the person time. But my question is, yes. what criteria, what, what are some values that you think the person should have as a leader? Because if you're saying that players are being indisciplined, if you're saying that players are not coming together, then of course there must be some um, leadership you know values that the person has to possess so what can that person do because if they if they come they are still going to come to meet this same team that finidi has left my point exactly like i said the only the only grouse i have with finidi was that if he was in that team in Cote d'Ivoire, before they got to Cote d'Ivoire, and all of that. And he must have been able to single out some players that were in discipline. Why the whole um, general invitation of virtually all of them, that means he invited the discipline to himself. And that kind of environment not right. So that means the next coach coming must come with purpose, must, um, must be ready to stamp it. I don't want X, Y, Z players. And let the world know that I, these, these are the players I need for the federation for reasons best known to them are inviting such and such players. Without mentioning names, I know that there have been coaches who have done that in this country before. So the next man I will come, his leadership acumen must and must show that he is ready to say this player, he will be able to give account for every player in that camp. That's what I'm saying. Mm. That is what he needs. Because at the end of the day, like I said, the ball stops at his table. He cannot give an excuse that this player or that player was invited by the Federation. He should know from day one, from the get-go, that it is only who I sanction that will be invited. That's what we need primarily. And I think that was where we needed to be get it right. Mm. But looking at, you know, uh, uh, the trend now, especially when we've had a loss and a draw, are you confident? I know you've mentioned some of these countries who you know, are playing as well, but are you confident that we would actually get a slot in the World Cup? Personally, I am really, even as I speak with you, I am still extremely confident that we can get our acts together. There is so much time on our hands. Yes, and especially when you remember that it's just, just four points of the the top of the, the law just four points six matches to go if nigeria cannot do that then in reality even the best coaches couldn't have done that for us that's my belief i believe so strongly that we can do that especially for instance if we get to south africa in Johannesburg, same climatic conditions with you where are they actually why shouldn't they win there in Johannesburg? That should be home plus. I remember sometime the qualifiers for the '96 Olympics, and I went to Mombasa in Kenya. It was a very cold region, and Nigerians treated the Kenyans pretty well. When they were asked, they said ah, they were so comfortable because it was very cool for Nigeria. I still, I still be a different 
difficulty for them in the honest work they do have or any other city they play that game. If we do that, we have reduced the deficit to just one point. And from the plethora of other teams, my regards to all of them anyway, but I don't think they are in the same pedestal in the Super Eagles of Nigeria. One point, we can drag it from those other four teams. And of course, shoot ahead. All right. Well, I hope that we, you know, do our best. And like you said, we have enough time on our hands. So I hope that all of these players are being whipped up and, you know, we can get that slot into the World Cup. We want to say thank you for coming. Thank you so much. My pleasure. All right, that's it for the breakfast today. We've been talking to Judge, and we've just been trying to make sense of the reason why Finidi had quit the Super Eagles. Anyways, that's where we have to wrap it up on the show today. Thank you so much for having a breakfast with me. Happy Salah once again. My name is Rime Paulson. I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a good day.